would like us all to recall the presence of God Almighty to be with us here for this occasion. On that note, let us offer individual silent prayers. Amen. Amen. We are here for a purpose, and that purpose will be delivered by eminent personalities here today. My task here is to introduce the chairperson for this press conference. Our uh, chairperson for the press conference is a household name, is a youth activist, and someone who is always ready to champion the cause of democracy. As today is June 16, is a commemoration of what happened, something that happens in South Africa years back, the fight for democracy. And on the day of democracy like this, we are having a press conference in the fight for democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have the honor to introduce the chairperson who is the PRO for the National Reformation Movement and he's a barrister and solicitor of the High Court of Sierra Leone. He's no other person but barrister Abu Richard Mansari. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, um, <coughs> Mr. Milo, for that very brief introduction. Uh, as the chairman of this program by the powers vested on me, I want to inform and also we will do this press conference in Creole so that um, uh, we message will go down well, well, well. It will reach the people um, at the last village na salon because um, uh, this press conference, a uh, very brief press conference, but uh, very much important. Deliberately, we choose to do the press conference on the 16th day of June. We are at the commemoration of the 46th anniversary of the gruesome death of young people in South Africa. We are in the fight for democracy. We, we call this press conference a group. We the fight for democracy within a political party. We are not the opposition political party currently in Salon. We are the All People's Congress. So it was by no mistake that we chose this day because we believe say, this day is a remarkable day in the history of Africans, a remarkable day for the push for democracy in the African continent. And South Africa being a big sister state, the kind of example we the steps for the fight for democracy, I think, say, now nice step worthy for TIC. Um, um, this is a welcome address. I want to welcome you all to this very, very important press conference. But also, um, uh, I will be remiss in my duty if I fail to use this as an opportunity for congratulate we all as a nation for the qualification we get yesterday for go to the nation's cup. I think so we need to clap for yourself as a nation. You know, after 25 years, we now qualify for the nation's cup. But um, uh, indeed, the boys, they don't make me proud. So as Sierra Leonean, we get the responsibility any corner out there at this moment for congratulating we, we all. And I say plenty, plenty thank you to the boys them for the kind of performance we the show. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are the National Reformation Movement, we formed some three or four years ago after we party the All People's Congress lost the 2018 elections. Basically, we formed wow, wow. Um, uh, I think Another information has been given to me that uh, somebody is reporting for an international radio, so we need to change the 
the language to English. Uh, I beg your pardon for that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you all. I am Abdul Richard Mansai, as he has rightly introduced me to you people as the public relations officer of the National Reformation Movement. Um, uh, it's deliberate that we choose today, the 16th of June, to have this press conference because this is an indelible date in the history of South Africa, in the history of Africans for the fight for democracy. And as a movement, the National Information Movement, the movement that is geared towards promoting democracy within the All People's Congress, we see it was very relevant to have this date because it is a remarkable date. As I was just saying, we formed this group immediately after we lost the elections in 2017, based, based on the fact that um, uh, we realized that um, uh, there are a lot of internal wrangling and so many problems within the party that led to us losing that elections. And uh, mainly because our party is not practicing democracy to its fullest, vis-a-vis -vis the 1995 constitution, which specifically pay much attention to selecting people to occupy positions in these modern times. So as young people within the party who believe in uh, democratic tenets, we came up with the idea of forming the reformation movement. We approached the, the stakeholders of the party, and uh, we tried to sell the ideas to their bottom, and they were very calcitrant in accepting our views. But um, uh, we have shown so much of respect, we have shown so much of restraint in ensuring that um, uh, they accept the, the ideas that we have introduced to them so that we can help to build the political party we love so much that could make Sierra Leone become a better place. Long and short of it, we have gone through many hurdles. We went to courts, so many things happened. We went to McKinney sometime in uh, 2019. November 2019, we went to McKinney and we had an understanding, a memorandum of understanding with the leadership of the party that um, uh, they, will, they have accepted our uh, 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 cries, the prayers that we are we, we, we asking for, and that uh, we will have this democratic constitution going forward. We will have con delegate conference and all other conference that will help to create a fertile soil for democracy within the party. But um, uh, to our dismay, since we left McKinney, we have not been able to achieve anything further because of the recalcitrant attitude of the leadership of the party. We have tried, we have negotiated in various quarters, and yet still it ended up to be in futility. So um, uh, as a movement, um, uh, we think it's what's very necessary to inform the public with respect to our current position and as to how things are unfolding within the party and what we think is the way forward. So, by and large, that is the purpose of this press conference. I'm, uh, I'm just here as chairman, we'll have various speakers as per my agenda. I want to officially declare this press conference open and I'll welcome you all to this all-important press conference. Uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, According to my agenda, um, uh, we'll go straight to statements. And uh, we have several people who will be making statements um, uh, with respect to the program we have today. First on my list will be the chairman. Um, uh, it's very interesting. Um, uh, um, uh, before going to statements, um, uh, I, I, I want to believe most of you people who are in the media houses have heard about the splits we had, um, uh, various groups unfolding as NIM. But today it's, it's very much important that we have the two phases who are the big names within the NIM, which is uh, Mohamed Sheridan Kamara and uh, Honorable Sirajin Gurit Kamara. These are the two, uh, two people who um, have taken the leadership with respect to the movement called NRM. And uh, I think it's very much important, this is going to send a very strong message to our people out there that the NRM is united than ever before. 
if they think they can toy on the division that was existing, that division no longer exists, as we now have the two leaders that are coming together, and I'm sure they're going to inform us today that we're going to have one leadership uh, that, will, that will guide the ship towards um, uh, the, the democratic destination that we have been yearning for. Um, uh, first on my list, ladies and gentlemen, would be the Honorable Siraj Rollins Kamara, who will have to make a statement. Can we give him a round of applause? Thank you, thank you very much, um, legal Rishi. And I was just telling that it is by coincidence that we had an offspring of NRM, known as ARM, and that is initials. I will reach out to my side, ARM, for him to inform that, actually. I am ladies and you the men. And today, as you've heard from Richard, it's um, African Church Day, and we know why we're commemorating it. And it's not a coincidence that today, uh, we are also calling you the press to herald our concerns. Um, uh, I hold a principle in life, which is you should restrain that reason will always be a better part of your judgment. When NIM was formed, I was a city member of parliament, a member of parliament, and I joined the movement because I desire change. I want to see my party become a formidable force in Sierra Leone and to continue to win elections year on tour. And so I supported the movement, you know. And when we reached a point to go to court, I did not support, but I was not against, because the same court removed me from parliament. So it was ironical for me to have supported a court action. But I was never against that. And so in the, in the process, we discussed, we negotiated, and we reached a point where the matter was withdrawn from court. But prior to the withdrawal, there was a, a memorandum of understanding. And to my chagrin, when we went to our first NAC meeting, the, the National Secretary General, um, um, Usman Fodi Ansane, asked us if we took the matter, we removed the matter from court based on goodwill on, on the MOU. And I said, what is this? We agreed we signed an MOU. Ever since we, be, uh, we signed the MOU, we, uh, we committed ourselves to fulfilling what we have in the MOU but never did they do this. And I think another member who never supported us to withdraw the matter from court, also tried well, this is getting too much, he tried to take the party again unilaterally. Him alone, he took some members of the party to court. And just like I never supported the NIM taking the party to court, so I never supported, but I was not against him, because that is his right. You know, so moving forward, today we are here to tell you that NIM it's a formidable force. We disintegrated at one point, and uh, we decided that we come back together to move the reforms, because these reforms we are talking about, not just about the party. We have to go national. There are issues of national interest in our national constitution that are not good. So we believe that after succeeding in bringing reforms in our party, we will move nationwide. So NIM is not stopping here. NIM will go to national and anywhere. So today, um, I must tell you that even when we had the, the divide, my brother Sheridan and I were in very good terms, talking terms. And of course, he attended my birthday party, and I, he's the only person I acknowledge publicly, because we didn't want politics to divide us. And today we are here to tell you that we've crossed that bridge, and we don't, it's such a matter of leadership. It not, it's not an issue. If it's a leadership issue, I would not have become a member of NRM. So people should not talk about um, leadership as an issue. Maybe I will not speak as a journalist, you know, thinking of the questions that you bring forward. So don't think about that. Um, we are here to work as a team and finish the reforms. On that note, I also want to inform you that yesterday on the 14th, two days ago, this present executive that had extended that time on two occasions, because of the history, that time actually came to an end again um, two days ago. And we say um, we cannot take that anymore. Um, the, the needful should be done. The courts, they went to court, Alfred went to court, and they asked that the issue of adopting the condition be, um, so they, be they grant a valid injunction so that we adopt the constitution. 
The court agreed and said, because some of you are not legitimate, so you should not go to a convention. And they appealed against that. And if they had one saying that political matters must be settled politically, why do they keep on appealing? So they keep on doing it so that they don't want us to adopt this new constitution. This is our pride. This is what we back on. And definitely, if you look at the APC new draft constitution, it's one of the best in Africa. It can only be compared to like the PDP in Nigeria or ANC in South Africa. And we want to feel good that in our time, in our day, we contributed. We moved for that question to come to play. So ladies and gentlemen, for God, for God and country, thank you so very much. And we will, be, we will hear the statement, the official statement from Chairman Sheridan later on. But I want to also take this time to welcome you and wish us all the fruitful deliberations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rollins Kamara, Honorable. I think um, uh, the statement is very clear that um, uh, we are united than ever before and that um, we are almost at the tail end of reforming the All People's Congress and this movement is not just about the APC but it's also about reforming Sierra Leone. That is why in fact we normally say it is for God I'm and country. Right, so um, uh, gentlemen, we hope that um, uh, the message of Honorable Sirajin Rollins Kamara will be well promulgated to our people of this country and to the world at large. Next on my list is that um, uh, we have members of NIM in the diaspora, so I want to use this singular honor to call on uh, the barrister and solicitor, Pasoi, who is representing George, 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 George Justice Soi, Soi Tarawali in the United States of America. I'm very sorry for that um, uh, error on my part um, to make a statement on behalf of NIM USA branch. <coughs> Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not a good public speaker. It doesn't mean that I can't talk, but uh, public speech in, speaking is not my forte. So I'm going to be brief uh, from, the, from the diaspora and the USA. We are committed to the reform process in this country. We shall provide the fuel to move the locomotive of reform. We shall give NRM the firepower to mow down on all of those who are against reform. The APC is a grand party. When the, AP, when the APC was uh, formed, some of us were young. I had not even uh, voted in an election. But in 1967, when the APC won the national election. By then, previously, I think two years earlier, we had won the election on the city council of, of uh, Freetown, whereby we elected uh, our leader then as mayor. In 67, when we won the national election, our leader and his AIDS were arrested at State House by the AD Corps to the governor. You know, the AD Corps, his duty was to protect the governor. He busted into the room and arrested the governor, put the governor under arrest, and the leader. That was the first 
challenge to APC authority in this country. But APC is the majority party in this country. You know, there are times when we've lost elections. That is when our members want to bring us or want to get our attention. Uh, when we were overthrown in 1992, I believe, the 1996 election, the APC did not fare too well. That was our shock that the population gave us to say, hey, look, you are the People's Party. You are the People's Congress. Act like the People's Congress. From five seats in 96, uh, we had over close to 30 or more than 30 seats in the ensuing election in 2002. And five years later, we didn't only win the majority in parliament, we elected a president. And five years later, in 2012, we had about 69% of the total vote in electing the president without a runoff. That is the APC. But in the process, decadence had set in. And Eskuruma had a very good first term trying to clean up the misgovernance of the SLPP. So 207 to 212, it was very, very good. It was 212 to 218. That's when decadence set in and all of the ills of government were perpetuated. In 2018, we lost the election. And people, people think we, we didn't lose. No, we lost the election. We lost the election because our people were mad at us because of the way we were governing. You can go and look all over the country. In APC strongholds, where we used to get 75 to 80%, probably we'll only get 65 to 69%. Even in Freetown, where we used to get 70% and above, I think we only got 68%. The APC mayor, outpolled our presidential candidates. <laughs> what does that tell us? There is something rotten in Denmark. <laughs> there was something rotten with the APC. And this is what the NRM saw, and that's what made it uh, uh, a reason for the NRM. No, we did not come to disrespect the elderly. No, I am an elder. I'm over 70 years old now. We didn't come to destroy the house that our uh, uh, forefathers built. No, we, we came to strengthen the house. And we strengthened the house by reform. We're going to exercise from the APC uh, mind their aversion uh, to democracy. We want to be democratic. We want elections, not selections. We want uh, a, a progressive movement. We want everybody to share from the benefits of an ordered society. That's why some of us decided to join the movement personified, personifying their ideals of young folks. You want a better country. You want a country with good health facilities. You want a country with uh, 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 good schools. I can see now 
the, the Sierra Leone I grew up in, it's not the Sierra Leone today. I went to my alma mater, the Albert Academy. When I went there, I had my seat. It was my seat, a chair and a, and a desk. There were probably 36 or 40 of us in the classroom. Today, most of the classrooms are empty. Children have to, students have to carry the chairs from one class to the other. We don't wonder. We're not going to absorb the APC that they, they are not partly responsible for some of the things. They are. But us, as true patriotic APCN, do not wonder. And we shall do whatever it takes. We pledge our wealth, our, our freedom, our everything to improve this country. We ask you all to come join us. Don't get excited because somebody gives you 10,000 leons, so you will jump and dance for him. Meanwhile, your, 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 your children are starving or are being miseducated. Don't, don't get carried away by that. Don't get carried away by the, the, the hegemony of a few people in the cabal. How can the Secretary, Secretary General, Mr. Dr. Yassane, or Lawyer Yassane, have two offices, both as an ambassador and the Secretary General? What, was he taking two salaries? And you have a whole lot of other people who didn't have a, a, an office. That's wrong. And yes, President Kuruma, you did your best. But it's time to retire. Good do. Please, let's get somebody else to, to help us move from the level that you made. So I joined the uh, NRM, the diaspora joined the NRM, and we will support lawsuits against APC if they continue in their bad ways. If they continue in their bad ways, we shall sue the hell out of them, excuse my friends. So I'm glad to be here with you all, to meet you all. Uh, this is the first time I'm meeting uh, you all in a, a setting like this. Thank you all, and good luck in our endeavors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Lordship for such a wonderful statement. And, uh, I'm so thrilled that uh, he was able to establish it better. We are not here to fight the old folks. He is an old folk of the party, but um, uh, he's in support of the ideals that is being promoted by the young people of the party who want the party to be transformed and become a democratic party. And also, most importantly, that they are ready, they in the USA, they are ready to fear the, the locomotive of reformation. And uh, they also will support lawsuits because um, uh, he is legally minded and uh, most of us in NIF are also legally minded. And we believe the best cause is to take the action legally. Right? Um, uh, in order to ensure that we have sanity within the All People's Congress. Next on my list um, is a representative from the United Kingdom, who is Mr. Abi Mans. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Um, Thanks to my comrades within the NRM for getting me and this young man. <laughs> I could have just handed the mic back to you because he said it all. He's seen it all, and I think we are learning a lot from him. 
But I, want, I just want to pass on the message from my chairman in the UK, uh, Mr. Abu Black Kamara. It's like the NRM is global. We've got the way forward that is answering everything to these guys here. Anything we do there, they need to approve it. Don't mind the split. They are fooling themselves. We are always one. We are always one. I'm saying this with an underline. So I just want to pass this message that if there was a split or perceived, but there, was not, there is nothing like that now. And I'm very happy to say this in, in a press conference. Why, uh, uh, what I want to say here is, why did the party brand us as rebels, I can say? We ask just simple questions. We just want reforms. Come on, go all over the world. Establish democracies. Go to the UK. I'm a member of the Labour Party. We have what they call momentum. NRM is nothing when they are ready. Yeah? Go to the Conservatives, the Tories. They've got the 1920 committee. When they're ready to mount changes, they say this is what is good for the party and for the country. The Prime Minister, or if they are the one in power, he or she has nothing to do but to listen to them. Go to Spain, even Spain. They've got, they, they, they've got a party called Podemos. It was uh, the Socialist Party, PSOE. Because these guys asked for reforms, they refused. They said, OK, you can stay aside. Go to the United States, the Republicans. They've got the Tea Party. You guys know about the Tea Party. You know, in fact, they, they present candidates. They say, this is from the Tea Party. We here. We're just asking for reform. Nothing more than a constitution. Nothing more than that. So I'm just passing this message to those that are arguing or those that don't know why we are fighting for this constitution. It's for the betterment of the party and the country. Because we all saw what happened in 2018. You know, everyone is talking, it is because of this election. It is because of that. We know there was something wrong in our constitution. And we just want that something that is wrong to be corrected. And here we are, young guys, professionals, risking their lives, risking because the threats they are receiving or we are receiving. But we don't care anyway. We know when the constitution is done, everyone will be happy. Forget, guys, from the UK, they said I should pass on uh, uh, this message. You guys just stick to your point. We believe in what we believe. And to the nation, we want you to give us some chance. This is simple. If x plus y equals to z, a little bit of my engineering, and you come, you say z minus x equals to y, just do it. It's the same thing. You can introduce logs on both sides or whatever. But x plus y equals to z. A constitution is a constitution. If the whole party is saying this is not right, let us just have it. Because I'm quite sure with all what has happened, if that constitution was done, we will not be sitting here today. Or we will be sitting here saying something else. So therefore, we're just appealing to the, our comrades out there that we are not rebels. We're just asking simple questions like any democracy in the world. I'll stop here so far. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dibimans. That um, the message from the UK branch is that um, uh, they are fully in support of the movement and that uh, all what we are asking for holistically is democracy within the All People's Congress. 
As Piero, again, I wish to send this message to the hierarchy of the party that um, uh, we are not rebels, we are kids in the block, children of the All People's Congress who have gone through the necessary apprenticeship as far as the politicking of the All People's Congress is concerned, and also we are men of the world. We believe that um, uh, if we want to have a decent political party that will attract um, people to vote for us, then we must ensure that democracy should be at its best within the All People's Congress. For heaven's sake, they are going all around tainting us as if we want to see that the party doesn't come to power in 2023. But the question is, had we wanted the party not to come to power in 2023, we would not have, we would not have taken the, 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 the matter out of court. We did so because um, uh, we love the party and uh, we want the party to forge ahead. But uh, to our dismay, they have demonstrated deceitfulness to the highest degree. Just for us to have a democratic constitution adopted, for heaven's sake, if we have bent backwards to take out the matter from court, what is so big for the chairman, de facto chairman, and his by coma and his executive to accept the adoption of a democratic constitution of a party? A constitution for which we have spent numerous time in sitting down drafting it. People have spent, people have put their energy, their time and everything in ensuring that we have a democratic constitution just for us to go and adopt it. But let me tell you, we know they are gimmicks. They are buying time because they know they are not popular. They know they cannot win an election anymore. But they are buying time to paint a picture that it is the NIM or it is the discord that we have in the party. That is why we are unable to win an election. We are not going to allow them to to, to, uh, to cause the APC to continue to be in political debacle. We are going to take the bull by the horn now. We are going to have massive campaign. We are going to ensure our people, we are going to spread the message in different languages because they are fooling our people, they are fooling our supporters out there. Most of them, in fact, are not even qualified to contest for any position in this country because they have been indicted, they are not qualified, and they want the SFPP to score a spectacular goal on us when it comes to the 2023 elections. So we are asking them to take the back seat and let them not delay the APC because we want to come to power in 2023. But we cannot come to power if we don't have a democratic process within a party. We cannot come to power if we do not adopt the constitution. So against this backdrop, ladies and gentlemen, at this particular juncture, I would like to call on the chairman, Mohamed Sheridan Kamara, to give us a statement. Press statement. The press statement, which members of the media, the various media houses, will take out. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, my responsibility this afternoon is to read the press statement for this particular um, press conference. The press statement is dated the 16th of June, 2021. It is not unexpected that our press conference is held on June 16th a day that marks the beginning of the Soweto uprising against apartheid in 1960, 1976. The coincidence foregrounds the essence of our bringing to the public domain the democratic reforms we seek and the manipulation, deception, and machination of the expired leadership of the All People's Congress Party. The NRM obviously is built on an unshakable belief in reforming the internal politics of the All People's Congress along more equitable lines. It is deeply rooted in the struggle for a democracy that guarantees equal rights to every member of the party. It is a weapon of resistance against the dictatorship imposed 
in our party's internal politics by the current self-proclaimed body of national officers. It is this desire to relax the enormous limitations which the party's self-appointed leadership has imposed on internal democracy that gives oxygen to our struggle as a movement. Most encouraging is the fact that we are not oblivious of the challenges with which a struggle of this nature can be confronted. We had made extensive recent calculations of the challenges involved in striving to reform a rogue system that strives on dictatorship, manipulation, and the retention of its own autocratic powers through deceptive means. Despite these challenges and the APC establishment's bad-tempered reception of the call for internal democracy, the drumbeat for democratic reforms will roll on steadily until a democratic constitution is adopted for the APC party. We are particularly pleased to inform the public that the NRM, never to be demoralized, has once again mobilized all its political factions into a single movement. The need for collaboration until a democratic constitution is adopted has subsumed the reform factions under a single umbrella. This merger has effectively laid to rest the split within the movement and render useless the agents, turncoats, and the instruments of the establishment on ending schemes. We find it beyond being deceptive that the party's defunct leadership is delaying the adoption of a democratic constitution by filing unproductive and pointless appeals to the High Courts of Sierra Leone. Pointless and fruitless as these appeals are, it is our view that the only reason the defunct leadership seeks to this unreasonable position is to buy time, prolong its illegal stay in leadership positions, and undermine the party's chances of winning the next elections in this country. We are also fully aware that the tenure of the National Advisory Council has come to an end. We are well in the know that the questionable extension of its mandate has also come to an end on the 15th of June, 2021. It is also not lost on us that the national officers, all without exception, have held offices illegally. The movement has also taken note of the veiled plan of the national executive to renew its already illegal mandate through an equally illegal body called NAC. We are further aware of a, manner, a matter in court that hinges on the legitimacy of the very executive that plans short and elaborate illegal operations. Since the intention of this operation, which is a pointless appeal to the court, is to hijack delegate, delegates to execute a diabolic plan against the adoption of a constitution, the movement urges the effort leadership out of short and unworkable plan that does not coincide with the party's collective interest. We cannot overstate the futility of any attempt to extend a mandate that has rested on an illegal foundation from the very beginning. In order to avoid twisting its way out of the gains the negotiating team has made over the past years, we call on the party's defunct leadership to stop wasting the party's time and comply with the current court orders. We urge the various stakeholders in the party to facilitate the setting up of an interim body that will conduct elections for the delegates who are to adopt the new constitution of the party. As the endless legal defeats have shown, it will be foolish to challenge orders that call for delegate elections and the adoption of a democratic constitution. The NRM remains committed to the struggle against the suffocating presence of dictatorship in the APC party. Least we forget, we would like to congratulate our darling Leosters on its qualification to AFCON in Cameroon. Congratulations to Leosters and congratulations to Sierra Leone. Signed, 
Muhammad Shaidan Kamara Esquire, signed Honorable Siraji Rulis Kamara, signed Alfred Peter Conte. For God and Country, a winner must emerge. God bless the NRA. I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We will go on our stage to questions from members of the 40 states uh, so that uh, we will immediately go to the button down after the questions from members of the 40 states. Question time. No question, no question from your journalist. Yes. I just want to know, um, like, if at all the fathers did not contact you with what you are trying to put in place, um, how can you succeed in 2020? Okay, what's your name and the media house you represent? I am an Amadi for the exclusive Any other question? Any other question? Okay. Nilo or somebody help with the mic, please. Yeah. No, that's it. Yeah, Mr. Besto Samba, uh, is there any plan again for you to go to court? Should. They still insist refusing to adhere to the MOU. My name is Larry Jackson. I'm reporting for City and Gary Montuil. My question has to do with the memorandum of understanding that you guys signed with the leadership of the EDC. Is there any duration of those leaders to leverage those powers? I want to ask. That's the sun. Yes, my name is Larry Jackson. I'm here for Western Canada's radio. So I ask, um, they have been diplomatic and um, what are smooth avenues um, through which the NRM has advocated and has agitated for the reforms you're seeking. But um, we keep having back and forth in the courts. Um, and you have already pointed out that you are racing against time. The party is racing against time and you are all racing against time. So. Um, what other, perhaps this would be too rough, brutal action, is there any that um, will take over from the other avenues you have explored, the diplomatic and other avenues you have explored, perhaps asking the courts for something else other than what you've been asking or seeking that is already dragging the tenure in office of this executive you now say are illegal and overdue in office? Let me start from uh, the second to last question about the gullibility of our grassroots uh, followers. And that's the problem we have. Because, in fact, when you, di you dissect the word grassroots, you have two words coined, grass and roots. But normally, if you have grass in your compound, what do you do with it? You trample on it, right, or you weed it. And roots, when do you see roots being praised when we have fruit bearing? In the sense that after each election, these people are dumped, you know, like a caterpillar. It paved the road, but after the road had been tired, it can no longer walk and, and trade that path. So, in fact, during one of our negotiations, one of the mediators said, oh, the people are tired with your business. They don't want to hear about court. They just want to have their shabby and dance. And I told him, you are the very people at the show. Your wife will not be part of that team. Your daughter will not be part of that team. And so for us as NRM, we see that as a responsibility, a primary responsibility to educate these people and say, Mami Sally, who sells um, um, potato? I have to go, maybe for West Africa Radio, you have to forgive me for this. I have to say, because I want the people to understand it. That mammy they sell in Plasas, na market, for 30 years. Na APC mami, all man sabia na area. Everything na mami, we don't do everything for APC. He don't educate in Peking. 
he don't even get sales. He, he don't sell in Plaza. Say he don't sell in a college. He don't get degree. Now the picking for come representing concern because the mammy don't work the people at one time. Sigajin there and there, himself, he didn't have the executive in picking want. He yes, said, no, the two people will decide a party up, say the party don't decide, let them have me in picking wait. And what happens most times, we go back to that constituency to try to do damage control. For make we cancel the candidates, so not popular. So we the move um, we take. Now for let we tell the people and say, not so for we. Most of we not get jobs them. We want for make we pull people from that I shall be and dance for nothing for ten or twenty thousand. So the gullibility is still there, but it's a process. And reforms not take place overnight, you know. And but believe me, when you don't do reforms, you don't bring a new constitution. And what do you need? You need people who they manage them. You cannot have those old players to manage that new constitution. You don't say. If Bill you also you paint some white in here, then you make them and they sell charcoal for can begin packing charcoal now. We place the dot. So believe that um, NRM will also scout for competent people, qualified people with integrity to take with party to the next uh, um, level of 2020 elections. Until we get credit with people, um, not to them they don't mess themselves up, now they will lead this party again. It's not possible. And so for grassroots people, um, we just we say, ah, we now dance one for dance, we they take time for educate them. And it's a process. It takes it take some time. But when we don't champion, we don't succeed by the constitution, the next process, then we'll see how we'll succeed in that. Yes, in a tendon to what he has just said, I think that's a major challenge for us as a movement and also as a party. The authorities of a party are taking serious advantage of the gullibility of people supporting the party. Yeah. Because um, uh, people are highly uneducated and uh, they do not have better understanding as what obtains within the party. And uh, these are the people that suffer the most. Right? Um, uh, there's this saying, in fact, we have the saying in NIM that I'm um, uh, quoting and quotes the one way not eat and drink, now they beat and kill the one way no one they eat and drink. Yeah. You know, because um, uh, all the people who cares about is to vote. To vote, to vote. Do they even want to know whether their health or medical facility is improved? Do they even want to know who they are voting for? They don't, they don't even care. Like they can just come, the, the authorities within the party can just come and impose somebody within the, within the constituency, and the people will say, yes, now for the party. And in fact, the most popular candidate most times when, they don't, when, when you are not given the symbol, they will take you again. Say you should go and make the, the unpopular candidates become popular. Is that a proper democratic system? So this time around, we are going to engage on a massive campaign, as I stated earlier. We are going to let our people understand that um, uh, these people that you are supporting, these people that are saying people are fighting the party, they are the very people who are destroying the party. Because... For heaven's sake, what is it about having a democratic constitution? Just the constitution, we are just asking for a constitution that is democratic. But let me give you the gist. As I said, these people cannot win an election. They know. The, only, the last time we had an election in a party was in it was it 2002? To have to, so for the 2007, 2005. And let me tell you, or every other positions we are selected, every other position except for the Secretary General, and that was as a result when Victor Fo says, no, I'm not going to accept, let us have an election. And when they had an election, it won. So they realized that, the cabal that is running the party realized that they cannot win an election. President Koma, former president, says, if you're popular, go form your party. We NIM say, if you're popular, come to the ballot box. Let put the box. If you want to become flag bearer of a party, come to the ballot box. You cannot become a president of a country, of a democratic country, and you are afraid to contest election within your party. You cannot. How can you win an election? How do you want to go to state house? The people have to vote, to vote for you. So you have to be battle tested. So we know it's a challenge. We are going around, we are going to talk to our people, and now this time around we are going into our local language. We are going to use the most popular language within our party. 
all the languages that we know the people the people are speaking within the party to sensitize our people because these guys are fooling us and we want the party to come to power in 2023 mr chairman Sure. Sure. Yes, um, thank you very much, um, Abdul Richard Mansare, the chairman for this particular um, conference. Let me look at the question on the MOU. Somebody asked a question on the MOU that we signed in McKinney. Indeed, we signed uh, um, the MOU in McKinney between the, the, the leadership of the party and then the leadership of the NRM. I signed on behalf of the NRM together with Usman B. Kalkamara as Secretary General. And then former president Anes Baikoma signed the MOU together with um, Usman Fodi and Saleh, Secretary General for APC. And then what we did, we honestly fulfilled our side of the MOU. We, we removed the, the matter from the court, we discontinued the matter from the court. And then um, it's now on them to fulfill their side of the MOU, of the agreement, and then which is they are to adopt or to facilitate the adoption of the constitution which we drafted, which is a democratic constitution of the party. We've already drafted the, 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 the constitution and then the onus is on them to facilitate the process for its adoption. Granted that there is a matter in court between Alfred Peter Conte and then the party leadership. But that notwithstanding, the party leadership, there was a time they approved the court and then they made applications to their lawyer that um, the court should allow them or give them the, 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 the powers or the, the mandates or waive the initial orders, the initial injunction slam on the party, the act that um, the injunction is waived and then um, for the party to be allowed to conduct elections or convention for the adoption of the constitution. The court says fine, since you are asking for the adoption of your constitution, which is a democratic constitution, it is in line with the democratic constitution of this country, which is the 1991 constitution. So therefore, the judge says, I am waiving my orders, I'm taking back my orders, and specifically, I'm ordering you now to go and adopt your constitution. That notwithstanding, to be fair to the plaintiff as well, those whose legitimacy have been questioned should step aside and wait for the constitution to be adopted. We had a series of meetings with the party leadership. We advised them not to appeal against that particular order. Because in the first place, the party asked for those orders for the injunction to be, to, 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 be, to be waived. And now the court is saying, go and adopt your constitution. We appeal to them not to make any appeal, any further appeal to those orders. The party leadership refused. They tendered an appeal to the courts, and the judge refused all the, the, the applications that they made, which is very clear. We've seen that the party is not actually ready to adopt a democratic constitution for the party. And because they wish to continue with their appeals, it is a calculated attempt, in our view, to derail the progress that we've made to draft a democratic constitution for the party and for us to win the 2023 elections. That is why we've written formally to PPRC as the third defendant. Two weeks ago, I wrote a letter to PPRC reminding them that as a member of the party, I am a third defendant in that particular matter, and desirous of having a democratic constitution being adopted for the party, I am calling the PPRC to direct, to create the way, the path, for us to start the process of conducting elections for delegates and for us to adopt the constitution. Because the orders of the courts gave PPRC the mandate as a fourth defendant in the matter for PPRC to supervise the process of adopting the constitution. And since the party is reneging, that is why I wrote a letter to PPRC informing them that they will also be in contempt of the orders of the courts if they fail to adhere to the orders of the courts of the Lanier judge. So what happened is that um, PPRC has written formally, invited the parties, and on Friday there will be a meeting at PPRC to chart the way forward how the parties will have a convention to elect, first of all, delegates that will take the parties to the convention and also adopt a democratic constitution. So some of us will be there to observe the process, to make contributions, to say exactly what will be the outcome, and then the media will be informed appropriately. But as it stands, it is on their side to fulfill the mandate of the MOU. We've done our side. Because they are reneging, that is why we are ready to take fresh steps to hold them into compliance. Uh, that notwithstanding, let me also comment briefly before I give the mic to Ibimans. 
on the aspect of the gullibility. Somebody asked a question on that. It's very, very serious. As a movement, since we started, um, this is one of the, the challenges that we are having as a movement. You know, the APC party, let me say it's over 60% a grassroots party. We have many people in the party who are not educated. You know, I'm a comrade, but I have to be very, very straight and, 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 and a straight shooter. Yesterday, for example, when the new star um, 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 won the, the match, some of them are politicizing the issue. And when I was very, very straight, I made it clear that this has nothing to do with politics. We are all Sierra Unions. We have to be straightforward. Let us embrace the victory. Some of them are saying, oh, you know, mother and Bobo. Oh, mother, ma ma mother, mother has paid you to do this. Come on. The NRM, as the chairman rightly stated, for us, that is why we say national. We are not saying internal reformation movement. We say national reformation movement. And the NRM will go national as time progresses. But today, we have started the reform process within our own party simply because we cannot talk about national politics or reforming issues at national level when our own party, internal politics, is filthy. We have to be very, very clear. That is why most times we have issues with them. They look at us to be spies of the, the ruling government, even when we have no business with the ruling government. But we just have to be very, very straightforward. We cannot call for national reforms at the national level. We are constrained to hold the present government accountable on issues of democracy and good governance when we have our internal politics on democratic. That is why we've chosen as a start to reform the politics of our party, to ask the defunct executive of the party to step aside. Because as far as we are concerned, their mandate has expired way back. Their mandate has expired. They renewed their mandate. That is why we are sending a very, very strong signal to them that we are aware that their mandate has elapsed yesterday, the 15th of June 2021. And any attempt going forward, they did that the last time. The illegal NAC extended the mandate of an illegal executive. So they do well in illegalities. We know all of that, but the last time, for the sake of peace, because we, we are on negotiations, we allow everything to be swept under the carpet. We allow the process to, to, to move on. But we want to bring it to the notice of the defunct leadership of the party. We also want to bring, bring it to the notice of the general public that we are not ready to tolerate anything like that going forward. For the fact that their mandate has expired, we are calling on them to comply with our demands, with the demands of the PPRC, for us to have an executive, an interim executive, that will take the party to a convention, adopt the constitution, and inherently elect other people that will serve in various capacities. And any attempt, any attempt absolutely, to continue to do it in illegalities by, I mean, concocting um, 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 other powers that they do not have by allowing NAC to, I mean, give them another mandate, will be met with the stiffest resistance from the movement. We are serious about this. We are very, very serious about this. And we are going to do just that. One year ago, we told them in one of our meetings at the party office that if they fail to comply, we always have a plan B. And when we made the pronouncement, they, 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 they took it lightly. They thought we were, we, we were joking. Until when they called for, 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 for a convention in Port Local, we told them that this process is not well conducted. And going forward, if you attempt to move on with the convention, we will implement our plan B. They took it lightly until when we went to the courts overnight, we drafted our papers overnight, we sued them in the morning, and the injunction was slammed on them. That was the time they came to the table for us to talk. And today we are sending another signal to them. There is a call from the PPRC They've been invited to a meeting, and we are demanding that an interim executive be formed, and that executive be charged with the responsibility to conduct lower-level elections for delegates, and at the same time adopt the constitution of the party. Any attempt to deviate from that, we would unleash our plan C. Our plan C. Thank you so much. <laughs> it will be greeted with. <laughs>
stiff resistance. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think what I was going to expand on, you know, done a lot. I just want to answer this gentleman. What will happen? Is it? What? What will happen? Well, is it? What will happen? Will happen? But it will. It will look. But it will not just happen. This body sitting here is a legal. Uh, uh, I can say it's a, a legal body. We can't just do things just like that because we want things to happen. Yeah. There is a plan B and there is a plan C. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot disclose plans here. But we know when we are dealing with our party executive, what has come out of this now is Everyone knows that there is this word that is very popular amongst insincerity. Insincerity. How can you negotiate for three years? Going three years, you don't get an answer for one question. That tells you that there is an, uh, uh, the establishment, APC establishment, is inefficient to handle the problems of this country. It's not just when you are in power that you feel your might. Politics, especially party politics, you show your might when the party is in problem. And we're not seeing it. All what we're seeing here is insincerity. You go there today, you discuss, they tell you this, you just walk out. They will come up with something. And in fact, they will coin that something against you, not only against the NRM, against you, they can uh, uh, attest to that. You know, so answering your, your question, what will happen, will happen. Sure. Oh, no, sure. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Okay. Few more questions. Yes. Samu Shila is my name. I work for Momentum Newspaper. Uh, in your statement, Mr. Piero, you said that there are people within the executive that they have been indicted. Can you name some of them? <laughs> it is clear. It is clear to the public. You know, you know the names of people within the All People's Congress who who went through the commission of inquiry, right? Um, and they, they are they are fighting their appeals, right? Uh, you can go to the Gazette, and uh, I'm sure their names have been gazetted, and uh, you can have all those information. But I must safely tell you that. Um, uh, most of the big players within a party have their names on the commission of inquiry. That I can tell you for sure. And uh, it's, it's an albatross around their neck with respect to their intention for becoming a, an aspirant or whatsoever. Um, uh, in conclusion, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, okay. We see or we hear and of um, another thing. This ARM or so, and we have been told uh, by that group that uh, a committee has been set up for negotiations are on the way or have already been reached um, with yeah, okay. um, some individuals um, who are supposed to start a committee that should go ahead with um, this uh, adoption of the constitution or um, electing the delegate that should adopt the constitution. Yes, um, let me quickly clarify that. Um, that is why if you look at the, the press statement, there's a particular paragraph which says, before now, we have different factions and um, splitter groups within the movement. But um, as of the 15th of June and the 16th today, all these groups are now together. That is why we have Honorable Busiraji, who was head in one of the groups, is here with us today. And um, I am here as Sheridan, the, well, I, I can say the original um, leader of the, the movement. And um, we also have Alfred Peter Conte. Actually, Alfred Peter Conte is the vice chairman of the NRM. 
Alfred Peter Conte, who is currently in court with the party, is the vice chairman of the NRM. You know, we are all politicians. If you have 99 tactics, we have 100 tactics. <laughs> we have 100 tactics if you have 99 tactics. Abbe Peter Conte is the vice chairman of the NRM. We are together, we are united, and um, so we shall continue. And um, with that, Alfred has made it clear over and again that um, for all the negotiations, committees, and everything, I mean, the NRM is on the ground, and uh, we are here as the leaders of the movement to represent him, and together with um, his lawyer, who is the attorney representing him in court. And um, even before coming here, we have an extensive meeting on several issues. And even on Friday, you know, we shall be representing the plaintiff, who is Alfred Peter Conte, at the PPRC. That is to tell you, we are together, we are a united force, because we strongly believe that um, the party had wanted to use that particular divide within the movement. But um, we are also very, very smart. Most of us, I mean, we are graduates with masters, holders, and then lots of other people, you know. That is why we know what we are doing, and then we are also understand them very, very closely. We are watching them very, very closely. We've been in politics for many, many years. I must understand here, I must understand the fact. When we were students for a big college and other colleges across the country, we've been in the APC policy for more, for more than 10 years. So we've learned from their mistakes, we've learned from their tricks, we know exactly what we are doing, and we are following the process very, very closely. The committee. The committee. Yes. Well, um, the constitutional committee, you say? Yeah. 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 I think they are the, 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 five the, or the, the committee. Yeah. These are proposed names. It's a proposal. Not that um, the committee has been formed. If you look at the press release that um, we released uh, last week, um, they are uh, proposed names. What happened clearly is that uh, we clearly understand that the party has lost its legitimacy in the leadership. And that's by Kuma. That is why in our presidents, we say with no exception, which means from the former chairman and, and leader of the party, because for me, it's former. Yeah, it's former. So to, to the last person in the party, all of them, they've lost their legitimacy. So that is it's a proposed list. We are calling on them. And then they are also working at their own level to see how best they could intervene. And we've been calling them to intervene because we know it is very, very, very important. People like um, Dr. Ablai um, Conte, for example, he's been vice president of this country under the APC, and um, they are moral guarantors of this party. Some of them, they registered the APC party when there were challenges with the party in 1996 and, um, and, and the past years. So if there is a very serious challenge at the moment, and um, the leadership of the party cannot resolve the challenge, they have the moral authority to step in and to see how best they could champion the process for us to have a very peaceful settlement. Because 2023 is very, very close. And then, I mean, we, we must keep our eyes on the ball. Um, excuse me. Just to, just to add to what the chairman has expired, we are giving them an escape at some of the things they've done. This party has always resolved its controversies, such as what we have today, by the creation of an interim committee. And it's that interim committee that would uh, conduct the affairs of the party. You do not have the same people who are being challenged running the party. Even uh, former President Kuruma uh, assumed his ascendancy under that arrangement. Okay? The, uh, during uh, his tenure, the APC party sent emissaries to the diaspora branches, like in, in the USA. They set up an interim committee. And the interim committee even uh, ran for about two or three years before we had elections. There is, it's, it's, a, it's a known mechanism in the party. You, when you have disputes such as this, where you, the leader, you've lost the trust and confidence of those whom you lead, then they bring in interim members to run the affairs of the party and they do election. 
right now the problem comes from from the top uh, president kuruma was a good president okay but good do okay they retire but we cannot have him and his cabal conducting this election again for retirement because if they, if they do we know what would happen you all remember when uh, we enjoined them when we did the injunction uh, of Putloko and when they went through that exercise the next morning and the president uh, was addressing them oh pa, no no go we want you no go we want you those are the type of delegates that uh, and uh, that the de facto leadership have in stock. And we cannot go to a convention with those kind of people. So we want a clean slate, true people, go in there and let's have elections. We don't want a ready-made presidential candidate. That's why we lost the last time. Because he was ready-made. You know, if Samura indeed wins a popular election within the APC delegates conference, if you, and, uh, 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 a good delegates conference, if he wins it, believe me, the APC party will come out in force sure. and support him and will probably win because we are the majority party in this country. Yeah. Now, if you cook up, if you cook up the soup, then we're not going to win because some people will stay away. Even now today, we 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 blaming some of our, our comrades because either they were not a hundred percent during the the 2018 election, and even with everything that's going on, so they decided to do things their own way. We need unity, but we cannot be united under this present hegemony. We need a fresh new start. And that's what we work for. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Lordship. Uh, I think he has said it all, to crown it all, that uh, we need a new vista that will take the APC to State House in 2023. We want the public to know that um, uh, we appreciate the, the the de facto executive for the time spent in running the affairs of the party but we think um, it's about time that they usher in new people right um, uh, these offices they occupied there are other comrades within the political party that are interested in this various offices for instance we have we have a treasurer that has been in that position for over 25 years then uh, we lost elections just in 2018, two months after elections. They tell us that the party doesn't have any money in its, in its account. Is that a serious treasurer? Is that a serious way of running the affairs of a national political party? We have a sector general that has been in the affairs since the days of Shaka Stevens. Shaka Stevens, Joseph Saidu Momo, on to date. And they are not all the people within the All People's Congress who are qualified to serve as a scribe of a party. We have a chairman who has been chairman for over 22 years. Don't we have other people within the All People's Congress? Somebody who has been a president of a republic. You need not to be a chairman of a political party as per best practice anymore. Because you cannot come to a radio station and have a, a debate with the chairman of SFPP. Ego will come in, you will say you, you've been president of the republic. So we have political fatigue. So for heaven's sake, we are sending this message. Please, former president and his by Koma, Secretary General and others, please give peace a chance and allow fresh legs to come in and take the APC to, to State House 2023. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your love and attention. Can we see the, the back, 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 yeah, uh, One, two, three, go. There is victory for us. There is victory for us. In the struggles of APC, there is victory for us. For us, oh yes. For us, oh yes. In the struggles of APC, that 
Bip, bip, bip. We. Now or In never. Now or never. <laughs> Forward ever. Backward never. Or sign. Or